The 8 gigabyte 5060 Ti finally gets benchmarked. Google's ad company is a monopoly and the 9070 GRE looking mighty fine. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet. Well, you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, April 18th, 2025. We're going to start off by mentioning that we're giving away this Sapphire Nitro Plus over on our brand new UFD Music YouTube stream that we got going on over on that channel. You can go check out that live stream in order to find out the details on how to win the Nitro Plus, which in my opinion is the best looking 9070 XT out there. And we're gonna have that featured in a video that's going live sometime soon. But what we're not gonna have in a video anytime soon is the RTX 5060 Ti. We don't have one, can't buy one, nobody's sending us one for review. So the best I can do is talk about a Chinese creator over on Billy Billy who got the first RTX 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte GPU reviewed and it turned Turns out that the VRAM, at least according to this review, doesn't make much of a difference at all. Eight gigabytes appears to be totally fine in the vast majority of their testing. You look at like Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, they perform roughly identically in the average as well as the 1% and 0.1% lows. And then also the exact same situation when it comes to 1440p. Now it isn't all sunshine and rainbows for the eight gigabyte card. There are some where it falls behind just ever so slightly. So we're talking at 1080p, the 5060 Ti 8GB is 16% faster than the 4060 Ti 8GB, and then the 16GB model is 19% faster. So we're talking just a few FPS here. At 1440p, the 8GB 5060 Ti 17% faster, while the 16GB pushes a little bit higher, coming in at 21% faster, but again, just a modest amount. And it's not really going to happen in all games. If you go through the Billy Billy video, the vast majority of the games, they're exactly tied, and there's even some instances where the 8GB beats it out. Now, there is some interesting, uh, if not weird data when it comes to DLSS 4 and multi-frame gen. The testing shows that the 8 gig falls behind when it comes to generating fake frames, but it appears like that might be a bug rather than an example where the 8 gig actually falls behind. Very strange situation. What's also strange is this gigabyte graphics card. I want to talk about this simply because I don't think I've seen a card that that's this small on this high end of a GPU before. Normally, you find them on like a a 50 class card whereas the 60 ti gigabyte card look at how small that pcb is it's only an eight lane gpu and so they made it just eight lanes big you got basically no room for very much in there and even the power connector is towards the front rather than towards the back it's a strange setup and most of it's just like back plate and fans weird gpu but speaking of fans and speaking of a pc that you might have you should definitely check out today's video sponsor as a pioneer and advocate of positive pressure design designing cases since 2008, Silverstone knows the importance of good filtration to a PC, and they know how to sponsor this video. If you didn't know already, keeping dust out of your PC requires calculated design to ensure good positive pressure airflow and correct placement of filters in cases. So in addition to making awesome cases, Silverstone is an expert PC filter maker. For 2025, Silverstone has launched their FF126. This set of four 120 millimeter size filters are quite special with both the frame and the mesh being made of stainless steel. It's common to see a steel frame or mesh but not both. This allows the Silverstone FF126 to be extremely durable, even likely to outlast nearly any other component in your PC, all while protecting them from dust and tiny debris. Grab yourself this impressive filter set from Silverstone via the link below. Thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. While you might not need to use one of those fan filters on a handheld while you're on the go, it looks like AMD is filtering out performance when it comes to the new Ryzen Z2A APU that's supposed to be launching alongside things like the Z2 Extreme, the Z2G, and the Z2. The latest reports on the Z2A indicate that it's actually going to be pretty far behind, being a Van Gogh APU coming in with only four Zen 2 cores and eight RDNA 2 compute units. So very far behind what was seen with the Z1 or Z1 Extreme in terms of generations on CPUs, and then also generations behind when it comes to the actual compute units and gaming performance. This is apparently going to be for very budget gaming handhelds that might be coming out moving forward. I just really hope that the price point makes sense like a 199 switch light situation rather than what we had with the RG Ally where you like you were paying 400 bucks for the Z1 when it sucked. And a lot of people think ray tracing sucks, which is all well and good. You're entitled to your opinion, but NVIDIA wants to convince you otherwise with their 108 gigabyte Zora demo, which is a comprehensive showcase of Unreal Engine 5 and path tracing using essentially everything that you could imagine. They have released this where you can download this onto your own computer and watch your PC cry 
trying to get all of this rendered on your RTX 3070. In case you want to upgrade to something that's a bit more worthwhile, like a 9070 XT that can ray trace a little better, maybe Reese can save you some money so that you can uh, get closer to four to one of these. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you guys have a good weekend planned ahead and I'll send you off into the weekend with some deals. Starting off today, we have the Cooler Master Elite 301 Lite Micro ATX case, which you can get for only $39.99 with included coupon, making it $15 off. But then next up, we have this Monsgeek M1WV3HE wireless gasket mount Hall Effect keyboard, available in this super sick purple color for only $97.49, making it $32.50 off. And then lastly, we have the Intel Core i5-13600KF desktop processor for only $149.99, making it $50 off the total price and hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time i'm gonna hand you off back to bread for the rest of your hot news cheers well reese it turns out that the u.s department of justice thinks that google's had way too good of a deal when it comes to its advertising business over the last few years a federal judge has now ruled that google is indeed monopolistic when it comes to their online advertising portion of their business and explicitly saying that they've engaged in a series of anti-competitive acts to acquire and maintain monopoly power in the publisher ad server in ad exchange markets for open web display advertising, and that Google tying its publisher, ad server, and ad exchange together establishes and protects its monopoly power in these two markets. So the idea here is that obviously Google is gonna appeal this because they do not agree with this assessment whatsoever, but the Department of Justice is indicating that Google may have to divest some of this on top of already having to potentially divest their Chrome asset from their company just because of the monopoly that's going on there. Obviously, this is a ruling that's happening who knows how this is going to play out later on down the line whether or not the appeal is going to go through we don't know exactly where this is going to end up this is just the initial ruling and there's probably going to be a lengthy court battle that's going to happen moving forward but google uh having to fight the fight in the courts on everything that's going on and apple has had to fight the fight on convincing anybody that the Apple Vision Pro is actually good to use besides YouTubers who want to make it for videos. And that's why we're getting reports of the Apple Vision Air. We got details coming out about how it's going to use titanium in order to get slightly lighter components as well as be dark blue or somewhat of a midnight exterior. So this is going to be slightly different in color. There's been a leaked version of the power connector, which is kind of their midnight color. It's a very, very dark blue. But one of the things to note about this power connector is that it actually is capable of delivering less power with only eight pins as opposed to the 12 pins that goes on the Vision Pro. But we don't know a whole lot about the Vision Air just yet in terms of its performance level. There's been some rumors that it's going to have an A-series chips like what you find in the iPhone as opposed to an M-series chip, which is what's currently in the Vision Pro. And also, we don't really know about the price point, what that's going to look like. There's been some speculation that it should be roughly $2,000. But again, that's just uh, ballparking that I've seen, not, ne not necessarily. Uh, an actual indication. Maybe it's going to be more expensive than that. And also, there's no ETA on when this thing's supposed to come out. The Vision Pro has now been out for roughly a year and a couple months. It could be time for the Vision Air to launch maybe sometime later this year, about 18 months after the launch of the Vision Pro. We'll have to see how that all shakes out. And AMD is shaking out their GPU lineup. We're getting specs being revealed of the 9070 GRE. We know that the 9060 XT is supposed to be dropping, but the 9070 GRE looks to be a pretty compelling option unless you happen to be one of those VRAM fanatics who wants 16 gigabytes. The 9070 GRE appears to have 75 percent of the total cores of the 9070 XT and it has 75% of the total VRAM that the 9070XT has, but it will be actually clocked slightly slower, meaning that it'll be only 18 gigabits per second, making it about a third lower than the 9070XT, as opposed to just a quarter lower like it is in the rest of the specs. But having a GPU that is roughly 25% lower in specs than the 9070XT could be worth it, especially because one of the videos that we're going to be releasing probably on Monday based on our editing schedule, we were able to unlock the RX 9070 and turn it into a 9070 XT. And the performance that you get out of that is the best that I have ever seen from a BIOS tweak like this, where you, it can match a 9070 XT, even though it has fewer cores. It only has 56 compute units, whereas the 9070 XT has 64, but that doesn't really appear to matter. And maybe the 9070 GRE could potentially get some treatment like that. Maybe there's a BIOS situation where you put the 9070 BIOS on it and it gets even
even faster. But obviously price point, not quite sure what that's gonna look like. This thing's supposed to cost 549. There's been reports that the 9060 XT is supposed to cost 450. Like that puts the 9070 GRE in like a $500 price point, which I'm not necessarily sure AMD can actually hit. We'll have to see what it looks like, but the details on the 9070 GRE look to be good, at least spec wise. The only real big uh, hiccup with it versus the 7900 GRE is that the 7900 GRE had 16 gigabytes of VRAM as opposed to 12, which is what we're allegedly getting on the 9070 GRE. But part of that is because the GRE 7900 was a cut down version of a GPU that started at 24, whereas the XT only has 16. So they can't really like drop it down a little bit. I don't think it's personally going to matter all that much in terms of performance. I think you're going to be more core limited than you're going to be VRAM limited on this GPU, but hopefully the price point makes more sense than what we have from Team Green right now. now. Let's see if you guys made sense over in the comments. We got Rob Loxy and saying, so basically the B580, 9070 XT and 5090 are the only worth it GPUs for their price range and performance range. No surprise that the flagship always gets the most attention, but it's basically now the only one you can even consider at this point. I'm just gonna disagree on a couple things here. The B580, I think absolutely a worthwhile GPU. You can get it very close to MSRP right now. Intel is crushing it there very silently. Nobody's really talking about the 9070 XT. Again, based on that Video that that's supposed to be coming out on Monday. The 9070 is actually incredibly worth it if you're willing to tinker with it. It's crazy. I'm so excited to release this video. The 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 numbers we got out of the 9070 is insane. Where it makes it so that it's a more sensible GPU for enthusiasts because if you're willing to tinker, you're going to be able to push this thing uh, past what you think is possible. I, I do agree the 9070 XT is worth it, but the 9070 shouldn't be slept on right now. But don't forget, you can also get a 9070 XT by going and watch our UFD music live stream over on YouTube. 5090, I also, you know, is that a worth it GPU? That's just in a completely different class. Those things are costing four grand right now. I don't know about that. If you had to ask me what is the most worthwhile NVIDIA GPU right now, I think it's the 5060 Ti 16 gig. I think that's the, I think that's the most worthwhile one even though i mean if you could get it at the pny msrp that should be fine other than that it's really it's really tricky i, I don't think the 5090s all that worth it i think the 5080s also very much a struggle and then okamich saying at least americans are seeing them at 420 and 550 our retailers are asking 500 for 8 gigabytes and 600 for 16 gigabytes set aside they want to be evg is charging 650 for the gaming x 680 for the vanguard over here 5070 is cheaper somehow okay that's weird uh, i just want to point out for something when it comes to comparing to american prices we we do not include tax, whereas very much of the rest of the world includes tax in their prices. So like I did a video recently on how I've already pre-ordered the Switch 2 because uh, you're able to do that in South Africa and my total out the door price was $723, but that includes 15% sales tax. And so my effective price was less than that and likely kind of be, gonna be close to what allegedly the Switch 2 is gonna cost after the tariffs hit. But I mean, $550 after a 50 15% tax rate puts you at $632. Even just at a 7% tax rate like we have here in the state of Pennsylvania, we're at 588. You're very close to 600 bucks. I'm not saying that's not bad. I'm just saying that like comparing American prices, you have to remember we're crazy and we don't include our taxes in the prices. You have to find that out after the fact in a very state by state. It's, it's wild. And then Andros saying uh, there was never any chance for the 9060 XT reaching 5070 performance. That's the performance level where the RX 9070 non XT is. I hear you. Um, and I saw some other comments of me, uh, people accusing me of being crazy for expecting that the AMD card has to provide higher value in order for it to be worth purchasing. I'm not saying I believe that. I'm saying that's what the market data has shown. Unless AMD can provide that much value, people don't actually switch to them. The 9070 XT appears to provide that much value. You can get close to between 5070 Ti and 5080 level performance out of a card that's significantly cheaper it looks like the 9060 XT isn't going to be able to hit that same value mark that the 9070 XT is at. So the market likely will not go along with it. However, that doesn't mean it's not going to be a better bang for buck GP, which just looks like it's potentially going to struggle a little bit more than the 9070 XT. And then a name talking about the ad that we had in yesterday's episode of Hot News saying older than radioactive by Imagine Dragons. Well, I feel old now. I used to listen to that song as a kid and I just realized how long ago that was. Yeah, that song old. That song real old. 
cool. Also, uh, this is one of the things that we love doing in our shorts. We love referring to 2020 and 2019 as half a decade or over half a decade ago. That bothers people a lot. I like to make you feel old. I like you to know that time just keeps on marching on. And so it does here in my present of filming hot news. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to go do other things. We'll see you back here for more of the Haas Tech News on Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow, we should have our review of the INEO 3 dropping on the channel. So in case you want to get subscribed and watch that. Additionally, as mentioned, we have that RX 9070 BIOS flash video. I'm going to record it right after Hot News. Editing will probably put us into um, Monday for that. But uh, I'm really excited for this video. Don't forget, we have a ton of giveaways going on over on our Twitch channels. Twitch.tv forward slash UFD Tech. Twitch.tv forward slash UFD Music. We're giving away a uh, 5090 game PC on UFD Tech. We're giving away a 5080 over on UFD Music. We're giving away 7900 GRE PC on UFD Music. And then, as mentioned on the YouTube stream, the Sapphire Nectar Plus. Beauty of a card. So check all that out. And I'm going to check out here. I already did an outro. I'm just doing a second outro.